PCT is used very widely today, uh, not only in Europe where it started, but increasingly also in other regions of the world, like in the USA and Asia Pacific and other areas. It has been included now in many national and international guidelines after only 15 years in the market. The reason for the success, I think, is that this marker meets real clinical need. The need for earlier diagnosis of sepsis and the need for better using antibiotics. Sepsis is still a big killer. Uh, despite all the progress we made in medicine, every day still die 10,000 people globally. And this is more than people dying from breast cancer, colon cancer, or HIV combined. So one of the reasons for the high mortality rate is the difficulty to diagnose sepsis early because the symptoms sometimes are very unspecific. So it's difficult to, to know if this patient has septic and has a risk to progress to severe sepsis or septic shock. The other problem we have is the very liberal and uncritical use of antibiotics worldwide. And this has led to the situation where we now face more and more uh, bacterial strains that are resistant to common antibiotic therapies. And due to that, we have a lot of increasing morbidity and mortality and, of course, an increasing burden to the health economics. On the one hand, we do have clinical conditions where it is easy to make a definite diagnosis. For instance, a patient comes to the hospital and has a broken arm. You do an x-ray, you see, okay, it's really broken, and you have a clear-cut diagnosis and a very clear treatment how to deal with that. There are situations where it's different, and sepsis is such a condition. Sepsis is difficult to diagnose, and we, we don't have uh, tools here. When you look, for instance, in cardiology, there, troponin is used as a biomarker, which can very early and very easily tell the doctor if this patient has had a myocardial infarction. And today, everybody is using trop troponin. It's a standard. And for infection, where the situation is so difficult and there's no tool today, the doctors are looking today if they can use also biomarkers in the same way as in cardiology. And here, procalcitonin comes in. The great advantage of procalcitonin is that it's very specific and sensitive for bacterial infection. And it increases very rapidly after the infection onset. By this reason, PCT is able in a better way than other biomarkers to support the diagnosis, the early diagnosis of sepsis. So much better than such markers like C-reactive protein or blood, white blood cells or other markers like interleukins. With our marker, the information is available within less than one hour. And this is extremely important because we know for patients with sepsis, every hour delay of administration of antibiotics contributes to 7% higher mortality. First of all, the higher sensitivity and specificity to bacteria, for bacterial infection and the very uh, rapid increase after infection. So this allows the, uh, the procalcitonin to give a more clear-cut diagnosis, a better differentiation of bacterial infection from other conditions that may cause similar symptoms. Another aspect is that procalcitonin increases with severity of disease. So we know that high PCT values or further increasing values indicate poor prognosis of the patient, whereas low PCT values indicate low risk pro for progression. And when we have a patient that is under treatment, we know that declining PCT values show us that this patient is on the way to improve that the infection is under control. There is high clinical evidence, and we have a lot of meta-analysis, systematic reviews that demonstrate that procalcitonin is superior to other biomarkers 
for the diagnosis and the risk assessment of the patient with bacterial infection. There's no biomarker in the world that you can use as a sole source of information to make a clinical decision. Because imagine sepsis is a very complex process in our body. And of course, one biomarker cannot reflect this complex situation. So of course, clinic is first. And the biomarker like procalcitonin gives an additional piece of information to add one extra piece of the puzzle and to give a better and more complete picture to the doctor and to make it easier to decide on the next step what to do with the patient. We have a very good body of evidence today to demonstrate that procalcitonin can help to guide antibiotic treatment. And the basis for that are now 14 randomized controlled trials that have been shown that you can use procalcitonin by integrating it into the clinical algorithm to decide on the administration of antibiotic and on the duration of the antibiotic treatment. And this improves the situation for the doctor and the patient because less antibiotics are administered and the patients are exposed to the antibiotic for a shorter time. That means as a consequence, first of all, the patient has less uh, adverse side effects because we know that antibiotics have side effects like diarrhea or nausea. Uh, so you would like uh, not to expose the patients unnecessarily. On the other hand, you save costs, of course, because uh, especially in the ICU, uh, the uh, antibiotic treatment is quite expensive. And third of all, and that may be even more important or as important as the other one, is that the reduction of antibiotic exposure, uh, the reduction of overall antibiotic use, we contribute to decreasing the antibiotic resistance. And we know that it's extremely high burden to the healthcare systems due to more and more upcoming bacterial strains that do not respond anymore to antibiotics that are available today. Those hospitals that implemented procalcitonin in their clinical routine reduced their antibiotic use dramatically. And it has been shown that by integrating procalcitonin into the clinical assessment, the prescription of antibiotic and the duration of the course of antibiotic therapy can be guided in a better way than with clinical assessment alone. As a result, the exposure of the patients to antibiotic could be dramatically reduced by 30 to 50 percent, depending on the clinical setting. And this, of course, is a, a great way to use uh, procalcitonin because, uh, as I mentioned before, we have a big problem with antibiotic overconsumption. So a tool to direct the doctors or to give the doctor a better idea is very helpful and is very appreciated. Of course, today, uh, this is not used or cannot be used everywhere because, uh, for instance, in the US, uh, PCT is not cleared for antibiotic stewardship, but for sepsis diagnosis and assessment of uh, risk for progression to severe sepsis and septic shock. However, in Europe and increasingly also in Asia Pacific, antibiotic stewardship is a major use of procalcitonin. It has also been shown that uh, using PCT in dead clinical algorithms not only reduces the use of antibiotics or the duration of the treatment, but due to the fact that the doctor could earlier stop antibiotic treatment when the patient was clinically stable and the PCT went uh, low. This obviously encourages the doctors also to discharge the patient from the ICU earlier to a normal ward than without using PCT. So it gives an extra piece of uh, confidence to the doctor. And uh, this is very appreciated and we can see that today some national guidelines 
like in Germany, for instance, include a PCT in that kind of antibiotic stewardship, but also the surviving sepsis campaign guidelines included procalcitonin for discontinuation of antibiotic treatment in septic patients. Study results does not mean at all that this has been become part of the routine. However, here it's really different because we have now 14 randomized controlled trials that show that the PCT approach is efficient and safe for the patients for prescription of antibiotic guidance and for guidance for the duration of the therapy. Based on that, many hospitals now introduce procalcitonin for this uh, specific use. And more than that, there have been some national and some international uh, societies who included PCT now for antibiotic stewardship. In Europe, of course, historically, the use of PCT is more established than in other areas of the world. But we see now that, for instance, Asian countries uh, very quickly adapt the use of procalcitonin. So we have also studies from Asia now, and we see that more and more the hospitals in the big Asian countries implement procalcitonin in the clinical routine. A little bit different, different situation we have in the USA, because uh, here, Procalcitonin is not cleared for antibiotic stewardship. However, we are quite uh, optimistic uh, that this use can also be in the future implemented also in the US because we see already that the acceptance from the medical societies is very high. And we have seen very recently, this year only, surviving sepsis campaign has included procalcitonin for discontinuation of antibiotic treatment for septic patients. I think we can say today we have already a broad clinical use and we see that this is very quickly increasing now once we have so solid clinical evidence. We have more than 2,000 publications that prove that procalcitonin is a very good sepsis marker, so it can be used for the diagnosis, uh, of sepsis and bacterial infection, and it can be used for the monitoring of the patients, for risk assessment, for progression to severe sepsis and septic shock. And we have, as mentioned before, now these new results, very convincing, that it can be used to help the doctors for a better decision making regarding the antibiotic uh, use. Let's say the scientific evidence is one aspect, but we have also more than 15 years of practical use, of practical experience with procalcitonin. And this, of course, is the other part of the story. After using PCT, after seeing uh, also the data, proven data that it works and that people in their daily practice also checked and, and made themselves convinced that it works in their specific environment. Now, really, more and more uh, physicians are convinced uh, that this is a very good tool and it's a helpful tool and that helps them to make the decisions faster, easier, with more confidence. The database and the feedback from the practical field, let's say, uh, inspired uh, many medical societies to include procalcitonin into guidelines. And there are not only guidelines for the ICU, there are also guidelines uh, for pediatrics, for instance, for pediatric use uh, in the pediatric emergency room especially. There are guidelines from the USA, for instance, for fever and critically ill patients. There are guidelines from the European Respiratory Society, where PCT has been included uh, for the first time. And there are many national guidelines for different uh, settings. So, this all is key to success. And another aspect, of course, is uh, you have to measure the procalcitonin at the end uh, to provide the information to the doctor. And this is now also more easily uh, uh, possible because uh, procalcitonin can be measured on the majority of the laboratory analyzers. And this now uh, has changed the situation that it's much more easier, for instance, also in Asia or in any part of the world, to measure this marker and to adapt it into clinical routine. I see 
three major uh, ways uh, where I believe PCT will be developed. One of course is uh, what we spoke about already is uh, the further um, increasing use worldwide in countries or in clinical settings where PCT is not so used so widely today. Another one is other indications, new indications. We have, for instance, very interesting data uh, from cardiology studies where we have found that PCT can be very helpful to identify early patients who have a primary uh, cardiac disease like heart failure, but who have a concomitant pneumonia. And PCT can be helpful in the emergency room to identify these patients and to treat them very quickly with antibiotics. And we have seen that this might be in the benefit for the outcome of these patients. So that would be another point. And the third one, I believe, is primary care. There I see a big future because we must be aware that the most antibiotics are prescribed in primary care. And as we have discussed before, PCT is a very good tool uh, to guide the, the doctor uh, to prescribe antibiotic or not, to identify the patient who really benefit from that treatment. And so when we know that the majority of antibiotic prescriptions are in primary care, I see here a very, very interesting application. Well, the potential impact is huge, of course, because when we imagine that procalcitonin is used as a real integrative part of clinical decision making, and we, we have seen that we can reduce the prescription rates of antibiotics and also the duration of antibiotic treatment, that means we uh, can reduce dramatically the use of antibiotics. So procalcitonin is here really a great tool to to improve the, the infection management in the hospital. Thermo Fisher Scientific products are distributed worldwide. Not all intended uses and applications mentioned in this video are registered in every country.